Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to the uh, Apollo GraphQL Federation sessions and in this video we are going to talk about building the Apollo GraphQL server with the help of auth service. So we have like auth service. We are going to create a multiple microservices auth service, booking manager service and home manager service. So what kind of architecture I'm going to build? We are using Apollo GraphQL gateway and I have three services authentication service booking service and home service and what is this application is about um, i'm just building a simple application where you can buy homes let's say there is a there are home entity and there is a booking entity where you can book the home and you will be the owner the logged in user who is going to buy will become the owner so it's i'm not going to build a housing.com kind of platform but i'm trying to create a backend platform for it where user can select okay he is going to buy this kind of a home uh, so he will generate a booking and then there is a home entity we will build these three different microservices separately which will be exposing the graphql interface and then we will aggregate all those sub graph through the graphql gateway this is what we are going to do so uh, let's get started how it is going to be these are the three services auth service booking service and home manager service these are the three services let's say we are going to build and in the graphql there are different approach of building graphql services there is a code first and schema first i mean these are the the two different ways to build a graphql service there is no major difference in one particular method you are going to write uh, graphql types graphql schema dot graphql files in another approach you are going to write a typescript class that is a code first and another is a schema first in the schema first you will be using the schemas in the code first you will be using the typescript classes so here you can see there are two different approach code first approach you will use a typescript decorators because you are writing a code typescript classes in the schema first you will be using typescript uh, schema definitions which we are going to write in the dot graphql files that is a major difference otherwise you will still write a uh, resolvers uh, uh, services all the other things are still going to be the same so we are going to use a schema first approach that means we are going to define the type definitions i hope if you already know what is uh, the basic graphql setup you define a schema file with the uh, with all the types uh, queries and mutations so here these are the modules uh, i'm going to build the same as authentication service there will be some kind of a duplicates because in the auth service we have already built as a separate microservice which is a rest based service now it is a graphql but there is a major chunk of code is going to remain same the only thing is we are going to add a controllers instead of controller we will be having resolvers in the graphql so we are going to have a user module domain module config module database module logger module swagger module all those things are going to be the same the only thing is inside a user module module and auth module you, we will not write controllers we will write resolvers and we are not going to write DTO classes. We will write, uh, uh, we will get the types based on the schema file. Okay. So we are going to write type dot graphical files and controllers will be replaced with the resolvers. In the resolvers, we will define the query mutation and the subscription. If we see the code, what do we do inside resolvers? This is how we are doing it in the code first. In the schema first, we are going to define the resolvers class something like this. And we are going to add a query, add the rate query, add the rate mutation, add the rate subscription. These are the three common stuff we are going to use. Query to fetch the data, mutation to change the, the data. Like you in the REST API, you do a get, put, post, delete, patch. So similarly here, mutation is, we will be used to update the data in the database. Okay. So inside a resolvers, there are, we will, we will write query, we will write mutation, we will write subscription. So this is how GraphQL works in the GraphQL uh, definition of your APIs. It will expose all those three things. And this is how we are going to write a subscription where you are going to subscribe to a data change and server will keep sending you the events when the data change. And this is how we are going to initialize the module GraphQL module dot for root. Okay. What we are going to do is we are going to have a three services. Currently the package is empty. Let's add them. So what we will do is a nest CLI, nest new auth service, nest new booking service, nest new home service. Using these three different commands, we can create it. I will switch the node version and I will just add auth service. It is just uh, bootstrapping the skeleton of a nest CS app. And then 
this is the part one of the video so what we are going to do we are going to create a folder structures in the folder we will just create a simple auth user okay and the domain module inside domain folder we are going to put auth and a user and then we are going to create a logger database config documents i mean uh, the swagger inside domain we will have a two folders one is let's say user and another is auth because these are the two main modules and we are going to create their separate services resolvers modules all those separate separate things we are going to put here and this is the docker compose same as the earlier example this is going to create a database now we have three services what i will do is i will just create uh, a simple docker compose file is enough to spin up the three containers creating three different database the node.js we will just run from the terminal npm run start dev npm run start dev postgres database we will have inside a docker compose file so i will do docker compose up okay this is not creating i need to restart uh, maybe the docker so this is my docker compose file inside this i have just one image postgres auth postgres home and postgres booking these are the three different images we will have and inside docker compose override we i just put a port definitions and the volume mapping that's it i'm creating a booking service and then we can create another nest uh, js app which is a home service and then uh, once it is started what i will do is inside docker compose yml i will update it and i will create two more containers for the database or in one container you can create a four database but that's fine i'm going to create a three different database exposing three different host port and docker compose up and you can see it has spin up uh, all the containers at least there is a one container right now what we can do is we can spin up all the containers so what we will do is we will just copy paste it three times this is a postgres auth is a container name so it will be a booking it will be a home so we have a three containers same we will update the docker compose override and create the three different copies for it so postgres auth postgres booking postgres home we just need to change the host port because host cannot have a two two containers cannot have a same host port the container port can be same because these are separate isolated containers and now i will just to just change the name of booking api data the volume mapping will be changed uh, on the host and we'll just copy paste it three times this is the home api data booking api data and this is the home api data and then we'll do it to a docker compose up just stop it and docker compose up so what it will do for me it should create a six databases two two database per container like auth api auth api testing home api home api testing and the booking api booking api testing right two container on each container and we'll do a docker compose up now that should create all the containers and yes we got we got it there are three containers are running we are good now rest of all the setup is creating the basic skeleton because this is the part one of the setup we'll just create some folder structure inside each and every folders and modules we are going to create a domain module and we will see how to write a, a schema first module because you know if i want to use type orm how i how i do is how i do is type orm module dot for root here i'm going to use a graphql module right so i'm going to write uh, the graphql modules for that i mean i will include nestjs graphql module uh, in the dependency so before that i'm just creating these dot graphql files because it's a schema first i'm adding resolver i'm adding service i'm adding the modules i have a two main modules like in the auth we are going to also use auth strategies auth guard now these things i have already discussed the same thing in the rest api microservice in the because same authentication service we created there i'm going to build some same kind of stuff it's so a lot of things you are already familiar so you can skip the uh, the video if you are already familiar and you can focus only on the graphql part so here we created a user service user module user types dot graphql and user resolver and then uh, because uh, we have a user module user graphql you can put an interface and all but now inside a domain because we are we have a domain so we will create a domain module or we, in the domain module we will put the user module and auth module so this is the domain module dot ts and uh, this is my app module 
so app module you will import domain module uh, inside app module in the domain module you will put a user module and auth module this is how it really works we added an entity so here oh, i'm going to create ormconfig.ts to run the migrations and all before creating a database module so after that we will also create a database module config module logger module and uh, swagger module swagger config here logger we are going to add now domain module or a user module how it looks like you will be just importing the resolvers the services all these things so how we create a simple module we import all the dependencies define all the controllers define all the providers define all the exports right this is a user module similarly we will define the domain module and inside a domain module we are going to initialize our graphql module okay so that th there we are going to create the real module because domain module is a root module there we are importing a user module and auth module so whatever is the common modules we can put the graphql module definition inside the domain module so here we are going to use graphql module uh, for that obviously i think we need to install a dependency that we haven't done now so it should be coming from the nest js graphql and we'll just do npm install minus minus save nest js graphql and graphql module i think there is a typo graphql module dot for root is a method there we define all that where from i mean this is the module which will do our graphql stuff in the nest.js service right uh, nest.js uh, framework independently provide this module so you can write the graphql services here we will just graphql dot for root and we specify the type path context and driver driver is important part because the driver we are going to pass apollo federation driver because we are going to use this service with the apollo federation gateway so first this driver is important part and this driver must be uh, apollo federation and we also need to install the dependency nest.js apollo and apollo federation driver and here in the context context is the if you remember how we you write the graphql uh, server we pass the context to populate the request object in the definitions like what is the place from where i can look for dot graphql files we have graphql files inside a user module and auth module graphql files we will define a schema the type definitions and all so this is the the output file which you are going to generate after looking at those graphql files dot graphql you can see in the type path we are passing dot graphql files and we are going to generate this output class okay so this is pretty much the graphql module we are going to build same graphql module we are going to build in all the three different services and from there we are going to expose the schema here apollo federation driver because i'm going to use this with apollo federation and in type path i'm passing all the dot graphql files so the the path pattern is fixed we have it in the user and auth folder so this is the part one let's see in the part two what we are going to do is we are going to write uh, the rest of the setup which is like the whole complete baselining the graphql service and we'll just run it and we will just see what it is exposing and then we will start writing the auth module and the the auth module and the user module where we are going to define the user service user service will have the same user sign up mechanism and the auth module will have a login and all the different apis we have built in auth service we are going to divide them into user and auth services and we are going to define the query and mutation queries means i want a user data mutation i wanted to create a user update a user i wanted to uh, just log in a user delete a user and i wanted to just generate an access token based on the login for those we will be using the query mutation subscription we don't need it we are going to write a jwt strategy because once user is logged in it user is going to come back with authorization header so we are going to use the same jwt strategy auth guard and all the concept which we have we discussed earlier 